Hello and welcome to beautiful downtown Toronto as we get set for the eighth race of the 2018 Ultra 94 Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge Canada by Yokohama. I'm Dave Bradley, along with me is Kyle Marcelli, former champion of this series, and Todd Lewis is patrolling the pits for us here today. But Kyle, this is a very interesting track and very different from the ones that the drivers have raced on so far this season. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Dave. This is an 11 turn, 2.8 kilometer street circuit. Um, arguably the highest profile event on the schedule for these racers. You've got the likes of Andretti, Ganassi, Penske, big IndyCar teams here this weekend watching, and these young guns are gonna wanna get a good result. Speaking of the young guns, the one who's been dominating the series so far as we take a look at the points is the 98 of Zachary Robichon, but Roman DeAngelis is not out of this one. Remo Rochetti and Stefan Rudzinski rounding out the top four. That's after six races bringing us after the Montreal race. Before we get things going, let's check down with Todd with one of the new drivers about this race start. Michael DeMeo will roll off fourth for today's event in Toronto. Had a bit of a tough go in race number one here this weekend. What did you learn yesterday that you'll use today? Um, learn that a lot of stuff can happen in the first corner with a bunch of us hungry young guns going for, uh, for the positions, but you got to keep it clean and make it through the race because it's 45 minutes and anything could happen in 45 minutes. So um, today we're going in with an open mind, try to make it through the first couple corners and laps clean and see where we end up. Yeah, unfortunately for the driver of the number 35, race number one here in Toronto didn't go as smoothly as planned. He's hoping for big things as we fire up these Porsche GT3 Cup cars here on the front straightaway. Just listen to the hum of those cars as they come to life. Kyle, as a driver, are you starting to get nervous once the engine is running, or does that make the nerves go away? Yeah, I, if anything, I think it makes the nerves go away. It's, the, it's more so the anticipation, you know, waiting for the moment to, 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 to start the car and then for the green flag to drop. It was neat to see Roman there and all of these onboards, you know, get to look at their eyes and just their, their pre-race uh, motions uh, as they get going here. To see the pace car roll off now the field set to move here on the front straightaway a great crowd on hand here as part of the toronto indy weekend the ultra 94 porsche gt3 cup challenge canada presented by yokohama now rolling on the front straightaway and it is going to be an interesting start turn one as we will show you in just a little bit is one of the best passing spots but right now we'll take a look at the starting lineup zachary robichon will start alongside his teammate roman DeAngelis in a couple marks motors entry. R Raymo Rochetti in the 96 and Michael DeMaio in the 35 will make up row number two. Row number three, Patrick Dusso is supposed to start there. He will not make the green flag and Stefan Radzinski in the eight. Michael Fanton drives to the 14 and Perry Bordelotti in the 84 makes up row number four. Row number five has Marco Cerrone in the only gold cup car here this weekend. Jeff Kingsley behind the wheel of the 16. Martin Harvey in the 08, one of the Masters entrants, and Neil Walker will round out today's starting lineup. Drivers are working their way down Lakeshore Avenue, getting some heat into the Yokohama tires. We'll take a look at the track map. It's an 11 turn, 2.8 kilometer circuit with four passing opportunities. Turn one being one of the key opportunities. Turn three, the heaviest brake zone on the corner. Turn five, a little bit more technical, challenging to make a pass, but is possible. And finally, turn eight. Uh, before they complete their lap and come onto the front straightaway. It's a tight track, but it's also a fun one for drivers and a little bit smoother this year as the front straightaway has been paved into turn number one, making that passing zone all that much more exciting. Before we go green, let's check in once more with Tom. All eyes focused on corner number one in race number two. Even after the lessons that should have been learned yesterday, there is concern among some of the drivers that will everyone behave and allow the field to get through corner number one. One driver told me, you can do everything right, but if someone else makes a mistake, it can end your day early. We're focused on corner one. Todd alluded to it, but there was a big mishap in race number one of this weekend involving Jeff Kingsley, Remo Rochetti, uh, Michael DeMaio couldn't make the start, and of course, Patrick Dussault unable to make the green because of damage incurred in that first corner incident in race number one. Field on the front straightaway, looking for the green flag. It waves and we're underway here in Toronto. 
So we saw already a bit of contact from the two Mark Motors cars as they head into turn one. Look at Rochetti in the 96 on the inside. He's going to steal away second. Rochetti gets a great drive off of turn one to take over that second spot. They're heading into turn three. Again, the heaviest brake zone on the circuit. This opening lap is an opportunity to take advantage of cold tires and, and make a move. Look at DeAngelis up on the outside. Now he dives down low. They're side by side. More contact as DeAngelis once again back up to second spot. And Rochetti must have been surprised with that move. I think he was. Uh, looked like Roman was actually taking the outside line and then quickly darted to the inside to, to make that overtake happen. Michael DeMaio in the Porsche Center Oakfield, number 35, is in there. But let's ride with Raymond Rochetti. That's a significant contact with DeAngelis on the inside. Now on board the 17-year-old. Yeah, I look at that. I, I think DeAngelis had the hole, had the opening, and had to go for it. And with his teammate out in front, clean air, starts are so important in, in order to keep touch. DeAngelis really didn't want to let Robichon get a couple laps in front. And there's the eight battle for third. Radzinski takes a look. That's fourth, I should say. As Radzinski took a look on DeMaio. Barry Bortolotti, you saw the number 84, one of the masters entrants here this weekend as we ride on board the Tolman Walker Racing number 83, Porsche Center North Toronto entrance on Neil Walker. It's a great battle for fourth, though, as we look a little bit deeper in the field. Marco Cerrone, the only gold cup entrant here this weekend. You can tell by the yellow headlights. There's a few cues on the car, not many, because they don't look that much different from each other, but one of the Gold Cup entrants is Marco Cerrone. Sure. And this is one of the circuits, you know, it's not a, I wouldn't say a high horsepower circuit, so although he's in a Gold Cup class, a little less horsepower compared to the Platinum cars, he can still make a run for it and compete with some of these guys in the Platinum category race car. Now, former Masters champion uh, is no stranger to this track or the Porsche GT3 Cup cars. He were on board with Rosicki. He was looking racy in the first couple of laps. I saw him poking, you know, to the inside, unable to make that pass for fourth by the looks of it. And Kyle, we do have a car coming down pit lane. It looks like it's a zero eight, Todd. That's right, guys. IMSA officials were all over the start and deemed that the zero eight left just a little bit before the green. That's the drive through penalty now being served. Martin Harvey in the Mick Cafe sponsored entry. Oh, a big lockup by your second place runner, Roman DeAngelis. That's a huge lockup into turn three. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a big flat spot on the front, uh, front right of that Yokohama. He was starting to close the gap to the leader. I just wanted to have a look to see if you could hear the vibration, see him wrestling the steering wheel. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a few more lockups before the end of this lap. Is that what happens once you hurt it once? Yeah, usually when you hurt the tire, every time it you know, has that rotation under the brake zone, it's going to want to lock up again. And it looks like rather than chance it, the 78 of Roman DeAngelis, the Mark Motors entry, is headed down pit lane. You can see the field blowing by. This has to be frustrating for the youngster as he abides by the speed limit on pit lane, finding his pit stall. He'll get there. And our own Todd Lewis is standing by. Todd? Yeah, exactly as we expected, guys. The Mark Motors team said they figured that tire was flat spotted. They're making the pit stop. Roman DeAngelis on pit road. Team making the change. They'll switch out that right front. So you see these teams, they're not used to have to make a pit stop following a tire change in a 45-minute sprint race. Uh, they had to jack the car up, change the tire, torque the tire, and now Roman's back on his way. But you could see that tire have a significant flat spot. It wasn't going to last if they kept it on there. Still this battle for a third spot now because DeAngelis has dropped back in the running order. Michael DeMaio holding off. Uh, Stefan Ritzinski in the eight. Zachary Robichon continues to lead.
Today's Ultra 94 Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge by Yokohama Race has been brought to you by Porsche. Still under green and still watching this battle for third between the 35 of Michael DeMaio and the Porsche Center Oakville Polycaro Motorsport entry and the number eight downtown Porsche of Stefan Radzinski. That one has been going on lap after lap now. Yeah, it certainly has. I saw Stefan quite aggressive in the opening couple of laps, unable to get by. I think he might have a bit more pace, but on these street circuits, again, it is just so difficult to overtake and big risk. Take a look at the lap times. Last lap put in by your race leader down in the 113 area, which is a very, very quick lap, and 114 for Ramo Rochetti. And that is why we're looking at almost a six second difference for first back to second. Yeah, Zachary just looks like a league. He's in a league of his own here today, very comfortable with his race car and uh, putting in very, very quick times ahead of the competition. See a little bit of body damage to the front end of the number 35. Again, 37 minutes remain in this 45 minute time race. So you really have to be aggressive, but you kind of have to save your stuff as well. I mean, it is a sprint race, but you don't want to burn things up too soon. Yeah, the biggest thing, you know, as we saw already with uh, Roman DeAngelis, is those lockups. You know, these street courses are bumpy, and uh, there's no anti-lock braking systems on these cars, so drivers just have to be cautious of that, especially as the Yokohamas start to wear out and lack a little bit more grip towards the end of the race. Those lockups could catch you out. I love talking to Zachary Robichon before today's race and asking him about this track compared to the last one they went to in Montreal. He says, at Montreal, you've got walls, in Toronto, you got walls everywhere, and you don't even have curbs to warn you when you're going to hit something. So at Montreal, you can bounce off a curb, and you may get a wall at the end. Here, you just get a wall and then a bigger wall. Yeah, these street circuits are a real adrenaline rush. Personally, I, I love racing on street circuits. When you it can extract the most out of yourself in the car, and you're you know within an inch of the concrete wall, it's a real thrill. Good look at Perry Bordelotti there in the 84, holding off Michael Fanton, one of the newcomers to the series. Michael Fanton driving for Engineered Auto and Genesis Home Services. And there's the Porsche Center North Toronto, number 83 of Neil Walker, off the pace and headed for pit lane. You could hear that motor sounded a little off. And we'll listen as Walker makes it through and Todd is standing by as he makes his way down pit lane into a stall. Todd? Yeah, the team not moving too quickly after that 83 car appears to have brushed the wall. They're surveying to make sure that the toe is not too badly damaged. Car going up in the air right now, but it does look like there might be a little damage to that car. Well, here we are riding on board with Walker as he Looks like he's coming into turn six, long carousel. Yeah, he gets wide off into the marbles. Hits the wall with the front left, certainly knocked the front toe out. There's not really much you can do at that point when you miss the line by that much, is it? Yeah, it just goes to show on these street circuits, you know, they get used once a year for motorsport, and if you're not on line where the grip is, uh, you're gonna find yourself in the marbles and, and uh, and ultimately in the wall. That's what's difficult too for a driver like a Michael Fanton, for example, who's coming here for the first time in a Porsche GT3 Cup car. You have to learn on the fly. You don't get a long practice session. You essentially get two races, Saturday and Sunday, and you have to learn quickly. And Fanton getting a little coaching help this weekend as well from veteran road racer Robin Buck. Of course, Robin teaches at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, which is nearby. Buck in the pits here this weekend, keeping an eye on Fanton in that engineered auto. Fanco Motorsport Genesis Home Services number 14, trying to get him up to speed. Fanton, unfortunately, a victim of that first turn incident in race number one, so he doesn't quite have as many laps as some of the drivers out here this weekend. He's doing a good job holding his own with Perry Borlotti, a guy with a lot of experience in these cars. You know, we would say a veteran in a Porsche Cup series, and uh, he's, he's, he's holding his own. He's given the chrome car, which looks great wherever it goes, that Mark Motors entry, the number 84, Perry Borlotti, holding off the 14 of Michael Fenton, who's given a great ride down Lakeshore Drive, heading to turn three.
little bit of a lockup from Fenton into turn number three as he tries to get the most of those Yokohama tires. Yeah, we saw him run a little bit wide after that lockup and lose a few car lengths from Bordelotti. Now, on this track specifically, the big wing on the back of these cars, how much of it is a benefit and how much of it is a deterrent here on the long straightaway? Does it add a lot of downforce? Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't say it's a deterrent at all. If anything, you know, these, these big Porsche Cup wings are going to make the car more stable in the brake zones. You know, turn three is a very heavy brake zone. I would imagine the cars are doing 130, 140 miles per hour as they enter that brake zone as he runs wide through the final couple of corners coming onto the straightaway. Uh, but yeah, big downforce in the brake zone and ultimately through the fast corners, you know, to keep the rear tires on the ground. Michael Fandon needed every little bit of the downforce through those turns to stay off the concrete walls. I don't think he caught them, but he got very, very close in through 9, 10, and 11. Those are tricky turns. And a little bit of a change from the last time that you raced here years ago, of course. Uh, the new soccer stadium is new since you raced here, and uh, there's a new ho hotel on the grounds as well. Back up at the front, it is the number 98 of Zachary Robichaud from Ottawa, Ontario, who has been super successful. Your points leader here in the Ultra 94 Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge presented by Yokohama, winner of six of seven events so far this season. As comfortable as he can be at the front of this field with a big gap behind him, Ray Morichetti is giving chase. Zachary Robichon continues out in front here at race number eight of the Ultra 94 Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge Canada by Yokohama. And downtown Toronto is Robichon. You can't even see the second place car in behind waiting for Ramo Rochetti, who's now a little under 10 seconds back in the open road Porsche Center Langley, number 96. Yeah, we've said it over and over again. Zach just looks so comfortable in the car, so mature, and, and he's he's just got the car on cruise control right now. He's not under pressure, not under threat, and on a racetrack like this where there's so much risk, he just needs to put the car on cruise and bring it home. But there you see a good example of the bumps. You saw the front tires hopping on the 96, and you saw the head bouncing on Rama Rochetti as we took a good look from the onboard camera. Does that take its toll on you as a driver? Yeah, I mean, certainly street circuits are physical, especially because the heat also, keep that in mind, you're not getting sort of that natural airflow that you do on road courses such as, you know, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. You know, these concrete walls prohibit, you know, the air to come into the cockpit. These drivers are getting hot. Uh, and mentally, too, there's a lot more focus involved in these streets courses just to, to thread the needle between the walls while getting the most out of the car. And you talked about hot. It is some hot here today. Definitely the ambient temperature a lot warmer than it has been in recent days. You ride on board third or fourth place, a battle for third. We're on board the number eight of Stefan Radzinski who fights his way through the bumps in the downtown Porsche Speedstar entry. We see the number eight of Stefan, he's working hard to chase Michael DeMaio for that third spot. Early on, he looked like he had a bit more of an edge, but uh, he's dropped back some now. Maybe he's used up his tire. He could be getting a bit hot inside the race car. Certainly the 35 looks comfortable and, and not under too much threat at the moment. Race number seven, Radzinski had a great drive. As a matter of fact, he was named the Yokohama hard charger of the event after starting deep in the field, took advantage of the melee in turn number one, but then set his sights on Jeff Kingsley and managed to track him down in the last 10 minutes of the race or so. So he might just be laying back here in race number eight and waiting to challenge the Poly Caro Motorsport number 35 of Michael DeMaio. At this point, could he be saving his stuff for the end? Would that work? You'll certainly have some tire degradation. And, uh, you know, we see it at, at, at every 
every circuit we go to. Some circuits are, are greater than others. Um, you know, and if you can take care of your tire at the beginning of the stint and it pays off at the end, that could be what Stefan's doing here today. See some of the drivers now picking up their pace and Roman DeAngelis back up to ninth spot, we should mention, as we keep an eye on the number 78 Mark Motors entry of DeAngelis. Second in points coming into this event. Of course, dropping all the way to the tail of the field for that pit stop, changing the right front tire, but he is mounting a charge. On board, the number 35 of Michael DeMaio, running in third spot, heading for turn number one. And here comes Robichaud working in through lap traffic. Martin Harvey in the Wingo Motorsports number 08. Just pulls to the outside. Harvey, a master's entrant here today, and uh, he's done this before. He knows you watch the mirrors a little bit, and you give lots of room. Now, we mentioned the Yokohama Hard Charger Award, and unfortunate for Patrick Dussault in the 77, couldn't make the start here today, actually leads the point standings for positions gained through events in 2018. So Patrick Dussault will be looking to repair that car and come back even stronger at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. Listen to that sound as they power off of turn 10 and on turn to, to turn 11 and down the front straightaway. Again, we mentioned recently paved. And you remember last year, so rough coming through that section into turn one and problems for the 14 of Michael Fanton. I was just going to say, you know, we could use a full course caution. Certainly that's what Roman DeAngelis is hoping for right now is a full course caution that the field can bunch up and he can be back in contention. The number 14 gets going again. It doesn't appear that we're going to see it. Uh, maybe a local yellow for a moment, but we're back to green. Yeah, we did not get it as Fanton able to get back in the fray. That was turn number five where things went amiss. And you saw the black marks on the track. There you see them still on the track from where the back end just stepped out. And those concrete patches must pose a challenge as well as you go from asphalt to concrete back to asphalt. Is that a, a little bit tricky to catch some grip? Uh, I think the number 14 got away with one there. Usually if you have a spin on a street course, it's not going to end well, but it's good to see that he was able to keep going. Have a look at your leader working this track masterfully. Again, turning laps consistently in the 1 minute 13 range to give you an idea of just how quick he was in qualifying earlier this weekend was the 1 minute 11 second lap he turned in qualifying. Super quick time put in by Zachary Rolichon. We see his last lap at a 1.13.8, just seven tenths off of his quick lap of the race so far, which I believe was a 13.1. So he's still on it, still pushing. And uh, with over 25 minutes to go, he just needs to drive a mistake-free race. He's obviously not under threat from second place. He's got a comfortable lead. And just about 13 seconds, the difference between Zachary Robichaud in first and Ramo Rochetti in the 96 in second. There you see the 84, Perry Bortolotti, but have a look a little bit further back. Battle for seventh spot. That's Marco Cerrone in the 18, the Gold Cup car, and the 78 of Roman DeAngelis. DeAngelis actually is in that ride because of Marco Cerrone, who said, you should give this youngster a shot here in a Porsche GT3 Cup car. Here we see DeAngelis getting to the inside in turn three. Sixth gear down to probably second, one of the heaviest brake zones as we've discussed on the circuit. Very clean, well executed pass on the 18. That shot seems to be working out very, very well for DeAngelis. He has his elbows up here. He is working hard to try and track down your leaders after early race mishap where he flat spotted his right front tire. We'll be back with more from Exhibition Place. Riding on board, your race leader, Zachary Robichaud on the streets of Toronto. I'm Dave Bradley, along with me is Kyle Marcelli in the booth, and Todd Lewis is trackside as we watch Robichaud masterfully work through the walls here on this street circuit at Exhibition Place. 
Nearly 15 seconds now. The gap back to this man, Raymond Rochetti, in the open road. Porsche center Langley, number 96. Holding down second, and again, no pressure from behind. And this represents a very good bounce back for Raymond Rochetti after heartbreak in race number one here in Toronto. Driver from British Columbia, unfortunately knocked way back in the field, but started to knock out some very, very competitive laps in race number one. And here he's showing exactly what he can do in race two. There we see the 35 at DeMaio. He looks like he's extended his gap over Radzinski as they work their way through lap traffic. Martin Harvey just behind them. And that's a good run for Michael DeMaio, former champion in the uh, Pirelli World Challenge, the Touring Car Series. Sat out of a competitive ride in a race car for several years, but back into it in the Porsche GT3 Cup. Of course, his first race was at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park and then went to Montreal. And he's learned a little bit every single time, and that's really what you have to do in these cars. Yeah, a big you? oversteer as he comes into turn three and puts the power down. You know, the series has changed a lot over the last couple of years since I drove in 2012, and, and, and for, for the good. Uh, there's a lot of young racers now in the series, which is great to see. Um, you know, guys like Michael DeMaio, Stefan Rosicki, I mean, the list goes on. Um, you know, these guys are working hard, obviously, with their sponsors, and the, we see dealerships involved. Um, it's really, you know, great strength for the series. Now, hats off to Polly Carroll Motorsport and Porsche Center Oakville, backers of that team. And there you see Porsche downtown Porsche backing the number eight of Stefan Radzinski giving chase. But you're right, it is very much a different feel. I mean, you've got the 17-year-old of Roman DeAngelis. They're now chasing Perry Bordelotti, where it used to be sort of a, a gentleman series. It's now become a young lion series, and these drivers are out to prove themselves. Yeah, yeah it's great to see. You know, this is a proving grounds for these guys. Ultimately, they're looking to make a career in sports car racing. Porsche has, you know, one of the best platforms, you know, globally, uh, you know, for a single make championship. Young guys trying to prove themselves. There goes DeAngelis, and the door closes as Bordelotti in turn number two decided to not let the youngster by as DeAngelis went outside to inside. Thought he had that run, but quickly learned differently. How careful do you have to be under braking? so as to not hop the back tires or lock up the front tires on these Porsche GT3 Cup cars. Yeah, well, I was listening as we were on board there, and just such a smooth throttle application as they worked their way out of turn three by, uh, by DeAngelis there. You know, we're well over halfway through this race. The tires got some miles on them. Uh, we saw some wheel spin from DeMaio early on, so, you know, you really got to take care of the tire. The 78's got pace over the 84, and he's just going to make a smart move. Now we'll see in turn number one is where he had the advantage last lap. Now off of turn number 11, if you get off this corner, sets you up for a good run down the front straightaway. In the toe, he's flashing the lights, and away he goes to the inside. Very clean, smart move. It looked like he had a little bit of lockup from the rear, but nothing that put him out of control. Got the position. Up to sixth spot now for the 78 of Roman DeAngelis, who's doing double duty here in 2018, not only racing in the Canada Porsche GT3 Cup Series, but also the American version of the same series and doing very well down there. Has a couple of wins already here in 2018. cool about these Porsche GT3 Cup cars here in Toronto especially is the walls make sure that sound rattles around and these cars sound perfect. DeAngelis working his way through the bumps into turn number 11 drifts all the way out to the wall and Runs down towards the flag stand, clicks off another lap, just under 18 minutes now in the 45-minute timed race. It's been green from start to finish so far. Yeah, you bet DeAngelis is kicking himself for that flat spot early on at the beginning of the race. He's got a quick lap of a 113-1. Uh, 
Um, actually, sorry, that's from race one. So, But clearly he has the pace to contend for the win. And you know he wants to be racing up front. Needs a yellow to get there. Uh, but until then, he's just putting in quick laps and gaining positions. And as far as the championship goes, he does need to start finishing ahead of his teammate, Zachary Robichaud. He did it once in Montreal, but Robichaud comes into this one uh, 20 points up on the 78 of DeAngelis. The sweet sound of Porsche in downtown Toronto. Zachary Robichaud well in hand, out in front. Welcome back to the eighth race of the 2018 championship. A good look at Jeff Kingsley from nearby Ajax, Ontario, racing in front of a hometown crowd here in downtown Toronto. Kingsley a little damaged to the left front corner. It looks as though one of the concrete walls has reached out and grabbed him at one point. Driving the second Paula Carroll Motorsport Porsche Center Oakville entry. As he works his way through turn or the carousel corner, one of the fastest corners on this street circuit. It's, it's rare to come across a corner like that. Often it's point and shoot, uh, but the carousel turn is one of my favorites here at the Toronto Street Circuit. Kingsley, after starting deep in the field, has rebounded nicely, is now up into the top five. He too was one of the drivers caught up in that opening corner incident in race number one. So he had a lot of learning here to do as well. And it looks like he has done it, having a solid race, although drifting a little bit further back from the front of the field. But really, nobody has been up to the task of the 98 of Zachary Robichaud. Raymo Roschetti has been closest at 21 seconds back. And there you see DeAngelis, who is mounting a charge now with the 16 of Kingsley just ahead of him. He is well within striking distance with it. 12 minutes left to go, so he's got time. And we just saw the best lap of a 13-2 for, for the 78 of DeAngelis versus a 14-1 of Kingsley. So with 11 minutes to go, I think the gap is five seconds. Should be enough time for the 78 to close that and, and hopefully make a move. It's one thing to catch the car, though. It's another thing to get by. Especially if Jeff Kingsley knows he's coming, he can take a little bit more of a defensive line and try and keep the 78 at bay. But while we watch the Mark Motors number 78 of Roma DeAngelis, we really have to take our hats off to the Best Line Auto Group, who prepares the cars of DeAngelis, Robichon, Marco Cerrone, the 84 of Harry Bordelani, and the number 96 of Raymo Roschetti. They do a lot of work at keeping these cars up to snuff, and boy, are they up to snuff, and then some, as Zachary Robichon has yet to put a foot wrong here in 2018. See, all the way back as we wait and wait and wait for Raymo Roschetti. There he comes into frame in the open road, auto group number 96. So if you're Zachary Robichaud, you're looking in your mirrors, can you believe that you have that big of a gap back to second? Like, would you know by your, your own performance, you think, man, this car is good. And yeah, that's probably a legit gap or something may have happened back there. You know, I'm sure he's gonna have communication from his team. You know, when I'm out front leader race, I like to know where that second place car is and I like to know what the gap is and what my lap time is versus what his is and so I can manage the race. You know, but in a single make championship like this where it's all about the driver, you know, these cars are all identical. Sure, they have different setups and engineering plays a role, but you know, Zachary's out front and he wants to build the biggest gap he can and then win this race by a long shot. Good look at third place, Michael DeMaio, who is catching second place in Raymo Roschetti in the number 96. So the Porsche Center Oakville backed entry of DeMaio is starting to pick up some pace now. But you see still the top two drivers, Robichaud and Roschetti, are the only two drivers in that 1 minute 13 area. And, and you talked about a single mark series when I mentioned the qualifying lap of the 1 minute 11 lay down by Zachary Robichaud. Even Roman DeAngelis De was looking at that. He was a half second back, and he's like, how does he even do that?
good look at the Speed Star Motorsports entry of Stefan Radzinski again, not really under any pressure as we're waiting for the 16. There he is, Jeff Kingsley. The Polycaro Motorsport Porsche Center Oakville. Number 16 come through. That's fifth place and just in behind, not too far out of frame. We'll see a flash of the 78 of Roman DeAngelis, who at this point he is one of the quickest cars on the track. You bet, uh, you bet the 16 crew is telling him, hey, the 78's closing the gap. We've got a little over eight minutes to go. You know, we need everything you can out of that car right now. The fender flapping on the 16. Is that enough to upset the aerodynamics of this track? I don't think you need to be worried about, <laughs> about it too much. I'm sure he had a little run in with the wall that, that pulled it off, but it's not gonna do you much, uh, much damage around the circuit. Riding down Lakeshore Drive. Downshift into turn number three. A good look at Roman DeAngelis as he continues the hunt for a top five finish. Under 10 minutes to go, and there's Perry Bordelotti, the leaders in the Masters Championship here today, solidly up in seventh spot, having a great run for the veteran driver. Back into lap traffic is your race leader, Zachary Robichaud will clear Marte Harvey, the man from Bertseville, Quebec. All the way into turn number three, gets back into line before having to commit to the turn. That always helps, too, when you're working through lap traffic, doesn't it? Yeah, I think he, he knew Robichon was coming, made it very easy for him to get by. You know, that's what you're supposed to do as a lap car, just be predictable, stay on line. And the, seven, or the 98, excuse me, worked his way through with ease. And that is exactly what Zachary Robichon has been doing all afternoon, working around with ease. He's still out front. Welcome back to the Ultra 94 Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge Canada presented by Yokohama. A name's a race on the streets of Toronto in downtown Toronto on exhibition play. Zachary Robichon continues well out in front. This is a battle for fifth that is shaping up between Jeff Kingsley out of Ajax, Ontario and the pride of Bell River, Ontario, the 78 of Roma DeAngelis. Not much of a gap. And I think DeAngelis is starting with the headlight flash already to try and get in Kingsley's head. I don't know if he needs to use the headlight flash. He's got enough speed. He's caught the, he's caught the 16, you know, over the last few laps. He's on his bumper now. He just needs to figure out quickly, where do I have the most uh, advantage or the biggest advantage and, and quickly make that move. You don't want to let the lead car uh, uh, lead you too long. He'll figure out where, you know, where, where you're strong and where you're weak. And you saw quickest laps, the 78 of Roman DeAngelis now down into the 113 zone. So he's up with the top three as far as a quick time goes. But we do have to tip our hats to the crew that puts on this event, Jeff Atkinson and staff here at the Toronto Indy. The next race for the Ultra 94 Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge by Yokohama will be at the Grand Prix de trois Rivières. So you get a little bit of practice on a street circuit here, and then you get to play again between two walls in trois Rivières, Quebec. Yeah, I think the trois Rivières circuit's a little bit more technical, a little a slower speed circuit, and, and even more challenging to overtake than, than here at the Toronto Street Circuit. There you see DeAngelis is continuing to catch the 16 of Jeff Kingsley into a proper passing zone. They're not quite close enough to make that work into turn number eight. But the Mark Motors number 78 of DeAngelis is right there now under four minutes left to race in this 45 minute timed race. So the clock is ticking for DeAngelis. This is a battle for fifth spot. There again, you see them flashing the lights as they work their way into turn one. The 16 just needs to stay focused, you know, hit your brake references, hit, get your apex, not make any mistakes. The overtaking is difficult. It's one thing to catch the car, another thing to get by. We see this all the time. We'll watch and see what the 78 can do. I've always wondered as a driver, you see the headlight flash as well. A driver in front, when you see that, do you get angry at the driver behind you and say, I'll show you, you're not getting around me. 
you know, it's just, it's just a quick distraction. That's all it's supposed to be, is a quick distraction to force the guy into a mistake. There you see DeAngelis at work in the split screen here and out the front window of the Porsche GT3 Cup car. Right in that front window is the Porsche Center Oakfield number 16 of Jeff Kingsley. DeAngelis has really calmed down since that early race incident where he flat spotted the right front tire. No doubt he was hot under the helmet in that race car, but he has settled down. He started hitting his marks and clicking off very fast laps. So takes a big man to settle down. Again, just 17 years old, showing his maturity. That's right. Now we've seen two laps here with Kingsley leading the 78 with unable to get by. You know, two and a half minutes remaining in this race. Again, just needs to stay clean, hit his marks. This is going to be a good passing opportunity into turn number three. Kingsley leans to the inside a little bit, driving that defensive line, angles back out into turn number three, and once again, he keeps the 78 behind him. So as the lead car, you're allowed to make that first move. You're allowed to take the defensive line with, with you know, no penalty. It's if you move in reaction to the car behind you, then it's considered blocking. Under two minutes to go now. So Jeff Kingsley can almost see the end of this one again. I'm trying to hang on for a top five finish. We still have Robichaud out in front of Raymond Rochetti. 27 seconds, the difference between first and second. Michael DeMaio holding down third just ahead of this group is the eight of Stefan Radzinski. But in through turn 11 and onto the front straightaway. And there will be two laps to go this time by the stripe. Now let's not forget, this is a, a fairly quick street circuit. There's some fast corners here, some third and fourth gear corners where, you know, the downforce that's produced in these cars is going to generate a bit of aero wash or some aero push, as we would call it, to that trailing car. So I'm sure the 78, as he gets close, you know, is going to deal with a little bit of that. Zachary Robichaux off turn number 11. There it is, the white flag for your race leader. The man from Ottawa, Ontario, has been dominant all weekend long. He has led from start to finish as we're on the final lap. These two drivers, though, battling for fifth, have yet to see that white flag as they continue to dice. Still Kingsley trying to hold off the 78 of Zachary Robichaud, battle for fifth spot. opportunity there and again DeAngelis not quite close enough in turn eight. Again we've seen just how much speed the 78 uh, had and how quickly he was able to catch the 16 but now getting by just such a different story there's four oh, passing. Kingsley outside and he brushes the wall in turn number 11 that is going to cost him DeAngelis gets a good run, some smoke now coming from the back end of Paula Carroll Motorsport number 16. Yeah, he's got damage in the right rear of that car. I don't know if he knocked the toe out, if he's gonna be able to complete the lap, we'll see. The pressure of the 78 got to him as the exit turn 11. He was only about a half car length to the outside, but your race leader now on the front straightaway, and Zachary Robichaud will take a win here in Toronto. Pretty much on cruise control for the second half of that race. Well out in front of the 96 of Raymo Rochetti, who will come through for second spot. Michael DeMaio uncontested in third. But have a look at what happened here to Jeff Kingsley. You can see he's just outside the line a little bit. And that's all it takes. That's the wall of champions right there as they come onto the front straightaway. And with one lap to go, I think maybe just looking in his mirrors, ran a bit wide as he turned in, missed the apex, got on the marbles and hit the wall. But again, Zachary Robichon drove an excellent race today to get yet another victory in the championship. An absolutely flawless performance on the streets of Toronto for the number 98 of Zachary Robichaud, earning his seventh race win of the year. Let's go down to victory lane and Todd Lewis. Todd? 
Zach Robichon has taken off the helmet, taken off the Hans device, getting congratulations from this Mark Motors team on another victory. That makes seven out of eight races now on the season. Remo City coming over to say hello and another victory, another sweep of a weekend. You had a big lead. Was it about maintaining focus and not hearing things in the car and bringing it home? Yeah, it's funny you say the hearing things because I swear to God, 10 minutes from the end, there was a weird noise coming from the left rear. No, it was a good race. I'm not sure what happened behind me, um, but that really helped us just settle, settle out front. And uh, the car was fantastic as always. Mark Moore's racing, as always, did a fantastic job. Um, it's unfortunate we weren't able to get a 1-2, but I got my good friend Ramo in second, so um, I'm happy about that. And I just couldn't thank the team enough. It's been a great weekend. Like you said, another sweep, and uh, we're just looking to keep the momentum going for the rest of the year. And Kyle, we'll take a look at the top 10 finishers, and you see the number eight of Stefan Radzinski coming home in fourth. Good run for him. Yeah, and Roman DeAngelis, after that lockup early in the race, had a lot of ground to make up, worked his way into fifth, and we saw Jeff Kingsley, as he brushed the wall on that white flag lap, ended up in sixth place. Let's head back down to Todd, who's standing by with your runner-up. Todd? Remo, a second-place finish, a terrific result. Looked like some pressure early is what helped you get up to second position. Yeah, I had a, a really good start. I almost uh, put my nose in on Zach at one point uh, and got by Roman. He made a, a pretty late move down into three. We had some contact, but uh, it's Robin's racing sometimes, so uh, that's all good. Uh, and then uh, Zach had a little bit more pace than me once Roman got ahead. Uh, had a little bit of damage on the car from the hit, so uh, I think that wasn't helping us very much. But uh, from that point, it felt like just managing the race. This place can bite you pretty hard, so uh, I was pretty content with uh, sitting in second at the, today. Thanks. And we'll take a look at the point standings. Four events to go. So if you're going to make a move, you better make it now. Roma DeAngelis lost a little bit of ground today. Absolutely, but let's keep an eye on that third spot in the championship as it's Raymo Rochetti, Stefan Radzinski, and Jeff Kingsley in a real tight battle with four races to go. And now let's go down to your third place finisher today. Michael DeMeo comes home with a podium finish, a hard fought podium finish yeah. by the looks of it. Yeah, it was uh, first half of the race. I was having a lot of pressure from behind, but uh, I told myself today's the day we got to get redemption back from a DNF yesterday. So I put my head down. The Porsche Center Oakville, Polycare Motorsports, GT3 Cup car ran flawlessly all race. Tires didn't come off, brakes didn't come off. It was just a solid car. And uh, it's, a, it's especially special to do it in front of the home crowd here in Toronto. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better day. Solid car, solid result. Good run today for the group of Masters taking part. And there you see top of the Masters podium, the 84 of Perry Bordelani celebrating in victory lane. This Porsche GT3 Cup Canada race in Toronto has been brought to you by Porsche. To the winners go the spoils, some champagne to be sprayed. Here on the podium in Toronto, our next race will be at the Grand Prix de 20 year from all of us at Fuel Media Lab. We'll see you there.